Well, welcome to another winter talk. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting here in Bangor in a lovely sunny December afternoon and we're just remembering all our fun that we had out and about. And one of the fun things we had out and about was the anchor. Yeah. Um, and it's just so nice to anchor out because you can get to some really wild places, remote places, and it's just so lovely to go to places that you feel that other people have not been. Yeah. Now, we did a video recently on mirroring balls, and a lot of the same arguments about using mirroring balls apply to anchorages. Like, um, we covered the topic, you know, why would you not bother with a marina if there's one handy? And as we said in that, it may not be handy, and it may be too expensive. Mm. So, oh, also... Uh, hang on, no, wait a minute, I just want to add, so why wouldn't you bother with a mirroring ball instead of anchoring? Mm. It I may not be one of them either. <laughs> <laughs> When you do think about where you're going to anchor, one of the biggest things you've got to think about is a lee shore. Mm. Um, like for instance, we wanted to go to St Kilda um, this year, and um, that is has a lee shore for anything that's coming from the east. And the weather all summer was from the east, wasn't it? <laughs> it was very easterly. Yeah, it was not, not a good summer for St Kilda. No, so that's the reason we didn't anchor there, because you could only anchor. Now, anchoring comes with some issues that mirrorings don't. Mirrorings are lovely, you just sail up to them, grab the mirroring and you're on. Boom, it's brilliant. It's very, very I like mirrorings. easy. Um, it's a very easy, easy thing to do. However, you don't know what state a mirroring's in. No, um, our rule of thumb is the cleaner it is, the more maintained the it is. One thing you've got to consider also is your windlass. Yes. Your ground tackle, your windlass, your anchor, your shackles, all got to be in good order. And that is entirely on yourself. You cannot put that onto anyone else. It's on your boat. Um, <laughs> we had to maintain our windlass recently. And uh, <laughs> you want to watch a windlass service. <laughs> There's a, there's a link up here. There's a link up there. Uh, but yes, keep your chain in good order. Um, before you go out for the season, lay your chain out on the deck in the pontoon. Have a look at it. Um, check any rust off. Get some cold galvanising spray and treat any areas that need treating. Um, check your... Um, your shackles. Check your shackles. Check your... Um, what's the twisty thing? Swivel. Swivel. Um, check that and if it looks like there's any cracks or deformation, get rid of it immediately. Mm. It's just not worth it. Uh, we look at our chain and we maintain our chain every single, single year. year. The biggest consideration I think we have with um, dropping our anchor is what's the bottom, mm -hmm. what's their indirection, and how much swell comes into an anchorage. For yes. me, those are the three biggies. Yeah. Um, so there's um, sand, oh if you can find sand. Or, or good mud. Or good mud. Nice hard mud. <laughs> that it can be fantastic and there are lots and lots of places which do sand and mud. Mm -hmm. um, but you've also got shale uh, which isn't quite as good. No. Um, you can drag a lot more on shale. And rocky bottoms are a waste of time, yeah. as are weedy bottoms, generally speaking. Yeah. Now, the nice thing about um, Google Earth is that you can actually um, scope out the places before you go um, and check out various anchorages. To be honest, and it's not often you say things like this, Bing's maps, maps.bing.com, I think are actually better maps than the Google Maps. They, they certainly are. They're, they're a lot clearer. And um, and they're in much better definition. Mm. So there's quite a few anchorages that you can look at before you even go to an anchorage. Scope out the various and, uh, places. And always look at down the bottom right hand corner for the date the photograph you're looking at is taken because they, they do put that date in the corner. So if that date is 10 years old, it's changed. It's changed. But one of the good things about using um, Bing or Google Earth is the fact that you can actually see where the weed is. If you do have to anchor in an area which is a little bit sketchy, 
you know, it may have old moorings about, it may have a lot of weed about, it may have a lot of rocks that your anchor could dig itself into and be hard to get out, then what you need to do is you need to put a tripping line on the anchor before you throw it in. And there's nothing complicated about a tripping line, although we have had <laughs> issues, with mixed, mixed results, but we're, I think we're past that. Don't use a floating line. We did that once and it resulted in the RNLI paying us a visit. <laughs> Um, thank you to House RNLI, you were wonderful. Thanks. Yeah, we thought that we would use a floating line. Um, on the grounds that it would keep the line on the surface and away from the propeller. Yes. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work whatsoever. So what we've done instead is, this is our boy, and we have some heavy shackles. Now they are designed so that the distance between boy and the shackles is deeper than our keel. No, deeper than our propeller. Deeper than our propeller. Don't worry about the keel so much. Okay. It doesn't move. That's true. Deeper than our propeller. So basically when we have this on the surface, the propeller is higher up than that. That way it holds the line vertically under the ball. So, and then we, from that down we have our tripping line, which has a carabiner which goes onto the anchor. Mm. And there's a little hole in the top of the anchor. If you look at your anchors, you'll find a little tripping line hole right at the top of the crown to put these onto. And the idea is that you pull the anchor forwards to get it out of whatever it's wedged into. Um, you can also use it as an anchor marker so the boats can see roughly where you've dropped your anchor and you can see where you've dropped your anchor because when it comes to pick it up, you'll, it's it good. It means out. that um, the person um, at the back of the boat uh, can see um, roughly where they're going. Roughly where they're going. There's all sorts of legends about anchors. What's the best way to get it out? Mm. We've come across people saying things like, just chuck it over the side and let it run out. We've tried that. We've had people say, lay the chain on the deck, kick it over the front. We've tried that. And anything like that that lets the anchor go in an uncontrolled fashion is pretty darn dangerous. Yes. Um, we initially um, put the anchor uh, chain on the deck. With your eyes open, please. I know, but it's only because <laughs> I'm scared. If you kick these things off and the chain's running across the deck, it could snag around your ankles to take you with it. It could snag around a cleat, pull a cleat out. All sorts of things can go wrong. It's just not worth it. No, uh, even though it never happened to us, I could see that an accident was going to happen. It wasn't a case of it might not happen. It was going to happen. Right. It was just a case of time. So the first rule is find out the depth you're in and drop out that much chain to let the anchor down. And as soon as that has happened, tell the person at the back that the anchor is now on the bottom and put it into slow takeover in reverse. All right, okay, okay drop seven meters. I'd say we're about seven now. All right, let out some more slowly. I'm in reverse. So the boat is being pulled slowly away from the anchor. Yeah. Then what you do is you let the anchor chain go out. Now you can either use the electric uh, gypsy or, or on the windlass or you can just loosen the gypsy and let the chain pull itself out. But you will have control of that. And as the boat moves backwards, the chain will be laid on the seabed. It will not land on top of the anchor. It will not land in a huge heap and tie itself in a knot. Mm. It's lifting now. Right, well then you can let some more out. So that was 30 metres now. And at some point you will get to the particular length of chain you want. And at that point you can tell the person on the helm to put the boat in neutral. You can lock everything off up front. And then you can put the boat back into reverse to make sure that the anchor is pulled into the mud or sand or whatever you've got down there. And um, you can leave the engine running. You can increase the rev slightly. The boat shouldn't move at that point. Mm. And that means that that will give you a good idea that the anchor is set well dug in and well dug in and once you put it back in your neutral you should be pulled forward slightly as the chain settles back down again um you then need to add your snubber um and the reason that you use the snubber is um to basically remove the shock loads from your windlass 
I've seen a picture on Facebook where somebody didn't use the snubber and their windlass was actually pulled right off the front of the boat. Mm. Um, so um, what we have here is we have our snubber. No, we don't. I better go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so once you've got the chain down, you need to snub it off, and we have this stuff for it. It's look, it looks like it needs a good clean, actually, but there you go. Um, so we have a, a snubber hook, and um, you know you need to make sure that your snubber hook is um, married with your chain and is the right size. This one is actually slightly the wrong size. This is an imperial snubber on a metric chain. Yeah. Um, so. Now, I have seen ones that have also got a catch, mm. and if you can get one that's got a catch, I would recommend those. Yes, because if the tension goes off this, it does tend to drop off the tube. It does. Yeah. And it has done so sometimes. It has. But the main purpose of this is you put this on the chain and you lower it down into the water and you tie the other end of this to one of your cleats. And what that does for you is this is a stretchy rope it has a lot of stretch in it so as the boat moves back and forward um, it means that forces are not transferred to the windlass they're transferred to the cleat and the stretchiness means that there's no sudden shock loads um, so once you've got your snubber on you then um, drop more chain down so the snubber has all the weight so that the snubber has all the weight um, and none of the um, weight is any more is on the windlass make sure that there's no weight on the windlass you've had a couple of days in your anchorage and you now have to pick your anchor up mm -hmm. so how are you going to do that <laughs> um well the first thing is if you do have uh, the um ball then you can um uh, go over to where the ball is and you'll be above the anchor but the main thing is you've got to rely on the person at the front because if you're picking up the anchor you need the the chain to be right down yes so you? i think it's fair to say that the number one thing you must not do is use the windlass to pull the boat to the anchor absolutely not that's how you burn a windlass out yeah um so what you've got to do is you've got to drive the boat to the anchor and that depends on the person at the front Absolutely. Because they can see the chain going into the water and they can see what direction the chain lies from where they're standing and that's where the hand signals comes in. Now we have done a video on in mooring balls on hand signals and how we use them and there's a link to that up here. Um, but the person in the front will basically guide the boat in the direction of the chain and as the chain hangs vertically under the boat you can use the windlass to bring that up. It's only lifting the weight of the chain that's loose. Um, this is very, very important when you're having to lift the chain by hand mm. uh, because um, that way you're only lifting the chain. If you're lifting the chain, trying to pull the boat forward and all this sort of stuff, then all you're going to have is a bad back before you know it. And you might lose a finger or two. And you might lose a finger or two. Which so is it's, not, it's not really a good idea. But if you're only lifting the chain, it's not that heavy. It only weighs a few kilograms. If you're anchored in five metres of water and you're lifting the chain between you and the bottom, that's five metres of chain. It doesn't weigh that much. It's only at the end when you're lifting the chain and, and the anchor. The anchor um that it really is back breaking work but on your windlass um you will have a manual control that can do that yes so the idea is you drive the boat to the anchor keeping an eye on the chain at all times and as soon as the chain is either vertical or slightly under the boat you can pick it up with the windlass don't let the helmer drive the boat too quickly so you've got to tell them when to cut their speed when to speed up you've got to give the directions for that at some point you will be directly above the anchor. Now a good rule of thumb if you remember to do it is look at your track on your chart plotter and you can see where you were when you dropped the anchor. When you're back at that point you're above it again. Simple as that. Uh, Beverly and I um, when we dropped the anchor uh, we put on a waypoint at that point <laughs> um, um, so that we know that's where we drop the anchor. And you'll know you're getting closer because if you've marked your anchor chain, which we have, mm. you will know that once you're within about 10 metres of it, you'll see the 10 metre mark coming up over the top of the windlass and you'll know that you're almost there. And at that point, um, 
you should be able to just pull the anchor out. If it doesn't come out, try driving the boat past the anchor to see if it gets plucked out. Do it gently, don't hammer on at five knots, otherwise you'll only break things. Um, but hopefully the anchor will get pulled up, you'll be able to get it out. If that doesn't work, you're going to have to use a tripping line. Mm. And if you don't have a tripping line fitted, well, that's another whole world of pain, but there's ways to do it. Yes, there is. Which usually involves sliding another line down the anchor and, and using, using that get, as a tripping get, line. And getting your dinghy out. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to go into that. We're just going to go into common anchoring here and hopefully it doesn't go that badly wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a cold winter afternoon in Bangor and we've <laughs> been filming for a while. We're feeling, feeling the chill. So what we're going to do is we're going to illustrate this with examples from our summer cruise. Back when it was warm and sunny and we were wearing t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those sunny days. <laughs> oh, weren't they lovely? I'm so looking forward to going out again. Absolutely. I'm with the working windlass this year. Yay!